<laughs> Jack is our firstborn son. He was a healthy young kid, and then when he was about three months old, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. When we first found out, he went into emergency surgery to um, relieve the pressure on his head. With Jack's location of his tumor, um, blunt, they do more damage taking it out than it would be if, if he, you know, we tried to attack a different approaches. The good news is, is that it was a grade two tumor, but um, the bad news was is that he would eventually go legal, or he is legally blind, but he would eventually lose his vision. The first thing we had to do was start chemotherapy. For six to 12 months was tough. A lot of surgeries, struggles through chemo. He had a shunt put in his head. Feeding tubes. Feeding tube. It's like we had this perfect baby, and then all of a sudden he couldn't, couldn't sit up, couldn't, couldn't eat, couldn't do anything. You kind of beat yourself up trying to figure out how it happened. You know what, what happened here, what happened there. Um, you know, but you know, you just you move on and you live each day like it's the last one, and you know, get through it. It's been such a long day. And the sky tiptoes to sleep Oh, I wish you could see the lights that I see Everyone just assumes because he has a brain tumor that, you know, it's, he's got two to five years to live. That isn't his case. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. We went through seven treatments trying to get something to control his tumor. And six years later, to have gone through seven treatments that weren't there six years ago, and I have a whole list on my notepad of other options that, that are next. I get a needle in my pore, and every time I go to MRI and chemo, I get, um, my bump keeps getting smaller. Children's Cancer Research Fund is important because the late-term effects of these kids, if we can improve their quality of life, we're keeping them out of the clinic so that they can become productive, active adults. Today, we actually know what gene mutation he has, or duplication he has. We just don't have a treatment for it. Oh, I can see how you shine brightly. Tommy's definitely become more interested in kind of what Jack's going through, what he's been through. He'll ask questions, obviously, all the time about, you know, his port. He'll just stare at it. Like, yeah, we haven't... Can I touch it? We haven't How really does gone. Do that. We he's kind really of gone. fascinated by it. Yeah, and Jack never cries, so he's yeah. He's pretty fascinated with the fact that Jack can get a needle put in him and not cry. So he thinks Jack has this ultimate superpower. Jack's very really brave. What impresses me most about Jack is his enthusiasm for life. That kid is the first one up at our house, and he's the last one to go to bed. He literally is an example of living every day to the fullest. The challenge for him now is he's starting to understand that um, he's different. And he, uh, he would always ask, when's Tommy getting his port? When's Will getting his port? He started to understand that not everyone's at chemo. I want to be a normal boy because like the other kids. And so, um, I don't have to go to chemo anymore. Open your eyes and see that you look just like a star to me. Yeah. Jack is turning six this summer, and he is starting kindergarten in the fall. That's a huge milestone. I wish he didn't have a brain tumor, but I wouldn't change any of it. He's the best kid. We're so proud of him. It's unreal the amount of love that has come throughout all of this. And I credit CCRF and um, our nurses and doctors, our family, being right there. Not one of them gave up on them. They always provided hope. Like a star.